Les Waller International, we are here at the Heim Gun Factory. Very small town, about three hours east, northeast of Wiesbaden. So we're here for a gun factory tour. Don't know how much we're gonna be able to show you inside, but I figured the least I could do is uh, introduce you to the uh, gun factory. Uh, they do have an online website. We'll give you that in the link to, in the description below, and we'll see what other types of uh, press materials we can include in this video. So we get up at four o'clock this morning just so we could come here and do the factory tour. You can see it's a pretty nice building here. Got some parking down there for us over there. Most of the other parking on the street has been taken care of already. So we'll see you on the inside. Anyway, the company was founded in 1865 by Friedrich William Heim in Sewell, Germany. Sewell is about 35 kilometers from here. It is the cradle of German gun making, literally. Uh, they've been making fine firearms in Sewell for nearly 500 years. Reason, they had the iron ore in the ground there. They had the craftsmen they needed to do it. And they had the wood they needed for stock wood. So everything was very, very close by. Uh, the front, uh, Krieghoff is an old Sewell company, Sauer and Son. Uh, Carl Walters is from Seven Millis, which is about 10 kilometers from Sewell. Mauser is about the only one that didn't start in Sewell. They're in North Oberndorf Necker and they're still there. At any rate, Friedrich Wilhelm Heim, his uh, claim to fame was he made the first self cocking drilling without outside hammers on it. And he got the patent for that in 1862, er, 1892. The company then passed to his son Adolf Heim and later to his son August Heim and his son Rolf. And at the end of World War II, the Americans came into Turingen first. They were here before the Russians, and he said, if you want to keep your stuff, get out of here. So in a night and fog operation, they packed up everything and moved to Ostheim in Bavaria. Well, after the war, they couldn't make guns anymore, so they made cuckoo clocks, spinning wheels, uh, pots, pans, printing blocks, whatever they could do to stay in business. Uh, with the founding of the new Bundeswehr, they started making 22 caliber training rifles for the Bundeswehr. 1952, they got a contract, and we don't know why, to make the M98Z and the M98P. The Z was for the sold, and the P was for the police. It's an M98 Mauser. Why Mauser didn't get that contract, we don't know. <laughs> but they didn't, have, they didn't have the permits to do it. And that was the funny part. So the German government had to go to the Allies and say, hey, look, let Heim build these guns, because they were 8 by 57 uh, IS. And they did everything possible to keep it from looking like a military rifle. It had a front sight ramp off of a civilian rifle. It had the, the rear sight was, uh, had a flip up leaf and didn't have a handguard on it. They did all kinds of things, so it didn't quite look like a military keep the Allies from flipping out over it. Well, August Heim and Wolf bought a hammer machine to coal forge barrels. And that's an interesting story in its own right. Um, there are only about three of them in Germany, period. We have one, it's a very old one, it's out of the 50s. It has the advantage over the new ones, which are computer driven. When they break, they're down for three or four days while the specialists come in to repair it. Ours breaks in four hours and back up, up, back up again. Simple is just sometimes better. And uh, the hammer machine is a <coughs> cold forging of barrels is an interesting story. Uh, it started with Sauer and Son. Um, young Sauer, his brother was supposed to take over the company. He was killed during the war guy from Switzerland who had piles of money said, I want to make guns in the new West Germany under the name Sauer and said, you got the name Sauer, I got the money. He goes, well, stop. He said, my brother was supposed to take over the company, I'm going to go half to my father. Well, he comes to Sewell and the communists have arrested him as a capitalist and all of this. So he's sitting there with his father and he says, Papa, he said, 
I have a man from Sister who wants to make guns in, in New West Germany under the name Sauer and so he goes, they listen to everything I say. So he made an excuse to go to the toilet and he wrote permission for his son to do this on a piece of toilet paper <laughs> and gave it to him. He came back to West Germany up in Eckernförde. There were some old World War II era or a torpedo test stations and the Brits blew up two of them and left the third one standing. Nobody knows to this day why. So Sauer and Son makes, uh, they made a, a contract with the German government for 99 years and that's where they moved into it. They could only make shotguns at first. And uh, all of them, they said, wait a minute, we, we'd like to build a drilling and for that they needed a rifle barrel, of course. And uh, the British governor said, okay, look, if you give me a list of tools you need to make a drill. And so one of the engineers goes, we're, we're making the list. He says, we put a hammer machine on here, they're gonna go nuts. The other engineer goes, wait a minute, they don't know what a hammer machine is, which they didn't because all that technology had been destroyed during the Second War. The Allies never got their hands on cold forged barrel technology after the war. So the British governor approves it. He comes to watch him make barrels and this thing's spitting out a barrel every three minutes. He liked to went crazy. And they said, wait a minute, you gave us permission to make barrels for our drillings and that's all we're gonna use them for. And Sauer and Son, even today, will not sell you a barrel blank. They will sell you a barrel for a 202 or, a, or one other where you can change the barrel. That's all that they're and then the way I rest out of the, understood the rest of the story, they kind of paid a severe price for that. There was a time, a long time before they got permission to build a bolt, bolt action repeating rifles. And that kind of happened when an American came to Sauer and said, I want you to build my rifles for you. And not even the Brits were going to say no to Roy Weatherby. So, so Weatherby Sowers are extremely sought after rifles and they are extremely good. And then it went on. From there, they they are still in Eckernförde, up in North Germany, by by uh, Kiel. So anyway, the, that's how the hammer machine thing came around. So back in, it. so Hein buys a hammer machine. They got a contract from Mauser to build the Mauser 3000 and 2000 rifles, which were sort of designed for the American market. It became the the Hein SR10. And it went on to the SR-20, the SR-30, or SR-30, and then the SR-21. The uh, SR-20 is today in a desirable caliber like 308, 30-06, or whatever. You're going to pay a pile of money for one of those. They're highly sought after, and if you find one on E-Gun, you're very lucky. General Townsend was able to get one. This is a 243. <laughs> And uh, that's that's one that okay you don't want a 243 we can actually make another barrel for it and put another barrel on it it's just a pretty dumb 98 anyway which is extremely reliable I I had one in 9.3 by 62 and it's uh, I have no intention of parting with it but that's after uh, Rolf. Hein passed away at a fairly young age, and his wife took over the company, Elizabeth Hein. And she had no clue about making guns, but she had an ace in her hand, and that was a guy by the name of Peter Baum. Peter, Peter was an absolute genius at, at uh, being the, the general manager of Hein. And he brought Hein into the world of safari with the AEAB. Safari Club still highly reveres Heim rifles to this day. And she finally sold the company off to a group of people, and that didn't go well. But uh, Herr Wolfman, who is now the owner of Heim, he's currently in Canada visiting his sons. Uh, he bought it in, uh, in 93, 90, or 1993, whatever. He bought the company and has been going on since then. But the, uh, Frau Heim just passed away uh, this year. She was 97 years old. And uh, in her early 
morning, she went to fashing parties till two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> stopping a freight train was easier than stopping for a line. <laughs> and she was a very, very mellow, very nice person to be around. She was just a very, very neat lady. She's sorely missed, even today. She was very happy that Harold Wolfman kept the name high. And believe it or not, there's a lot of commercial reasons for doing that. Heim was well established as a well known name, and if he changed the name to something else, he probably would have went bankrupt. That simple. Oh, who's this? We don't know. And they're not, they're not going to buy anything from you. This is part of, the, part of the problem with Noblex. It was Carl Zeissina, the original Zeiss. And then it was bought by, after the wall came down, it was bought by here, Dr. Bernhard Doctor. And it became Dr. Optic. And it took him 20 years or so to build up his name and reputation. Then it went bankrupt after his death, and it was bought by Analytic Gina. And they sold it off to Noblex, and it started all over again. How do we build up our name again? Nobody knows who Noblex is. So there's these traditional German companies, if you can keep, if you buy a company like this and you can keep the name and it's got a good reputation, you're going to do well. It's that simple. If we're changing their name and starting something brand new, you're going to have a problem with it. It's just, this is a very tradition bound uh, population here. Very, very traditional, what they, the way they think and do. Uh, the only real change I've seen over the last few years is the young hunters back way back when they all bought a drilling or bought a, a, an over and under combination rifle of some kind or another, and now they all want bolt action repeating rifles. The, we sell, still make drillings, we still make side by side doubles, we make over and under doubles, but the main focus now is the bolt action. That's what they all want. Mainly because they're considerably less expensive. A good drilling today, you're looking at myself, I have a high model 35, what's called a, a side lock over and under drilling. And I bought it in the early 90s. And if I had to replace it today, it would cost me 27,000 euros. Oh. And so that's one of the reasons that these uh, guns are now high end and they're only done on special order. We don't have any in the production line at all. The bolt action repeater is the, the name of the game these days. We have uh, currently suspended uh, production of the Model 26 uh, combination guns, the over and under rifle. It either came as an over and under rifle or as a rifle shotgun combo or as a what we call a mountain carbine or a Bernstützen. It was a small caliber rifle on top and a large caliber rifle on the bottom. And so now you kind of know the history of Heim and how this all came about. And from here we can start back through the factory and take a look of how these things are made. And you will see how a cold forge barrel is made. Thank you.